Hello and welcome to a new video and in today's video we'll be talking about something interesting We'll be talking about autonomous vehicles and specifically an autonomous bus Yes, it is this bus that you can see right here And today I'll not be only talking about it But also we will be testing it together with the PhD student who is working on this project So we can get more information from him We will be exploring together this interesting project in the University of RPTU in Kaiserslautern, Germany and specifically in RR Lab So let's get started after the intro People get scared and anxious when we talk about autonomous vehicles especially after these videos that went viral for autonomous vehicles losing control but is it really not safe? Accidents just in Germany in 2022 were around 2 million and a half from these accidents around 3,000 people died and according to the World Health Organization in 2018 almost 1.35 million people died worldwide from road accidents which is around 3,700 people dying every day again according to the World Health Organization 94% of these accidents are due to human mistakes mistakes like losing focus, getting fatigue or speeding up these mistakes are impossible to happen with autonomous vehicles so imagine how much we can reduce these accidents if we are using autonomous vehicles the autonomous bus is accompanied by many sensors including lidar, radar and cameras this helps the vehicle to have perception for all the environment around it this perception ability is impossible for a human to have just think about the blind spots that we have while driving so currently I'm at the university in front of the building where our lab is this is like the small lab garage where you can see the bus Hey, hello Hamza Hey Abdullah, How I was you? waiting for you Thank you for having me No so, problem, no problem uh, Can you show us the sensors uh, in the autobus? Yeah, of course So uh, the autobus has uh, different uh, types of sensors It's just not the camera or laser scanner We have the 2D laser scanner We have the 3D laser scanners And we have the 6 stereo cameras The main idea of this bus is to interact with people and look for priorities through the crowds. So first we start from the outside. So we have these stereo cameras all around the bus to view the 360 view all around the bus, yeah? This camera is used to, for the door, yeah? Yeah, so for, is for the door or activities at the bus stop. Okay, yeah. Okay. And we have also another camera inside? Yeah, there are two uh, cameras inside, similar same ZED cameras. Yeah. And the idea is to uh, detect the activities of the people inside if something goes wrong and also uh, if somebody's standing on the door so the inside uh, is used for the door safety. Uh, since there is no driver so the bus should understand if when the pedestrian wants to go inside the bus. So here we have this feature where when we uh, stand in front of the bus so we have a camera there which can see and detect the skeleton of the person and as we raise hands it can detect and the door opens automatically and as we come inside so you can see there's another camera in the cabin which can which is mainly used for the safety so that if someone is standing inside the in between the door so the door does not close as soon as i move back the doors are then closed what else we have around so these are the these are the sensors which are normally used for the for navigation and perception yeah. and also we have these 2D laser scanners so these are mainly from a uh, sick uh, company these are uh, outdoor safety scanners they are more robust yeah. than normal uh, 2D scanners uh, you can see under the uh, bumper this is uh, mounted invertedly so this is like the back of the bus yeah so uh, the bus is actually bi-directional uh -huh. i would say yeah so, in both directions yeah, because in pedestrian zones, you go to a corner and then there's no way to turn around. Ah, yeah. So you directly go back in the same direction. Okay. That is why the bus from both sides looks the same. Ah, so yeah, it's it both looks the same. same. Yeah. So, um, we have a very special safety system which is safety certified and this whole system was bought from the SIG company and it's just not the scanner, it, they have their own uh, CPU, they have their own input output modules yeah, and their own motion, uh, motor controller as well, interface, motor controller interface. Here you can see that the 
six safety system is uh, mounted with all the CPU and input output modules. Yeah. And uh, the idea is that we have this. Uh, uh, 2D lasers, uh, laser scanners, so they have these safety and warning fields. Okay. So once you are in the uh, safety field, the the bus has to stop in any case. This is somehow integrated with the speed encoders. So as the speed is increasing, the uh, safety fields are also increasing because of the uh, more um, long uh, stop distance. So basically, if the, if the bus is moving and there is like an object close to this uh, yeah. threshold, like there is a threshold or something, yeah. the bus has to stop. Yeah, I can show you in the software also. Yeah, sure. Yeah? And this is independent of the high level software. Mm -hmm. It has to stop if something goes wrong. And these, this safety system is directly connected to the, uh, to the emergency brake software. It's not connected to the hydraulic brakes, but directly connected to the emergency brakes, mm -hmm. which are uh, uh, normally active. I mean, this is different from the buttons themselves. Yeah? I mean, they are working the same way. So once you press on one of the emergency buttons, the bus also stops. Yeah, yeah. No matter what's happening. Yeah. So we have this uh, four emergency buttons outside and two inside. Yeah. And also we have a, a wireless emergency button. So uh, just in case we are monitoring from outside and yeah. something goes wrong, we just press and it directly stops the uh, bus. That's cool. So now we're inside the bus and yeah. this camera. Yeah, so here you can see this is the inside mm -hmm. camera, stereo camera, which uh, detects the skeleton of the person. And here you can see the activities of the person. Yeah, so here if I'm standing, here if I'm standing uh, in between the door, it does not allow the door to close. Then here you can see if I'm sitting here, you can detect me. Uh, partially but it knows that the person is sitting if I'm in front of the screen and I want to interact because this is a touch screen yeah. so if I want to interact I can see the person wants to interact somehow so yeah I then enable my GUI accordingly so after this nice intro we will now start moving the bus autonomously and we will see how it's working so now we are inside the bus and you can see the bus moving inside the university yeah, the bus can drive around 40 kilometers per hour, but uh, in pedestrian zone, we have restriction of six kilometers per hour. So we cannot drive faster than that. So you can see now it's driving smoothly. Yeah. And we try to stay in between the lane. So uh, maximum we can go for uh, to up to six kilometers per hour, not more. Six kilometers. Yeah. Okay, so, so I don't know if it's clear enough or not. Yeah, but okay, so okay. as you can see that um, here on the screen, it shows the fused data of all the 3D lasers, all the laser scanners. So the sensors are being fused and yeah. uh, you can see what's on the screen is the fused data from all the sensors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can see here another view. Yeah. So here you can see uh, we drive through this tentacle approach yeah. and here these are the obstacle tentacles where it checks for the obstacles and the drivable area and then we have the feature tentacles so based on the path segmentation it tells the best uh, uh, tentacle to go on yeah so i can see the green areas are the loud yeah. regions yeah? yeah and the red are and the drive obstacles there yeah uh -huh. okay and you can see the view here so this is what we see in front of us and this is the view from the screen So one of the safety features in the bus is also the sound system. So the bus has to be able to inform the pedestrians outside if there is uh, like take care or something, if someone is not taking care or not focusing, the bus is having this sound system that can inform the pedestrians about uh, taking care. So here's like the prototype. You can see someone standing in the, on the way, walking in the way. Please give way. So this is the voice audio system. Hello again guys, this is another day uh, because last time Hamza was busy and he had a meeting. So today we are meeting him again to ask him some questions and have a little nice chat with him. So let's go to his office. Hello Hamza, thanks again for having me. No problem. Uh, last time you didn't introduce yourself, so you can introduce yourself this time. My name is Kazi Hamza Jan and I'm doing my PhD in Robotic Research Lab and my topic is uh, Autonomous Navigation in Pedestrian Zones. Yeah, where are you from? I'm from Pakistan. Oh, where in Pakistan? Uh, it's Peshawar. It's in the north of Peshawar. Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. You said that you are working on the autobus. Yes. 
What inspired you to start this research? Why this topic? So uh, during my masters, I did my uh, masters in electrical engineering. But during my masters, uh, my electives were in robotics. Mm -hmm. So there we used to play around with different like uh, small robots, and this was quite interesting for me. So after my masters, I came to uh, this exactly same lab uh, on the uh, project collaboration, and I found the work very interesting here. So I applied for PhD and here I am. So the autobus, the idea here is that the bus should navigate by itself, move around the environment. First of all, what type of environment it's moving in? Basically, it's a, people normally call it urban environment, but this is inside urban environments, we have these pedestrian zones. Pedestrian zones means that uh, where uh, conventional transport is not allowed. It's just for pedestrians, yeah, such as uh, city centers, or campus environment. So basically, the the speed here is, should be so slow, yeah. Yeah. So okay. in pedestrian zones, even if a car is uh, driving, it has to drive uh, up to a six kilometer per hour. It's not allowed there. So in such zones, uh, since uh, due to some factors such as economical, um, environmental, these zones are increasing uh, in their lengths, yeah? yeah. And now we really need to have some kind of special transport. So that we can transport the elderly and disabled from building to building. So while doing this topic, did you face what are the challenges that you faced? What were the like the hard stops you had in this topic? I almost started with a scratch from the scratch. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the vehicle from France. Uh, there's a company called Compi Robotics. Mm -hmm. We purchased the basic uh, vehicle, basic uh, connection to the motors and to the brakes, and then. We, in our lab, we built this vehicle, uh, like for example, adding all the hardware, the embedded PCs, the sensors, the, the converters, all the electronics, this was added by us. So when it started, the vehicle was just connected to the motor, something that's moving with it was electric also, yeah? They just gave us a joystick control, that's all. Uh -huh. And it's yeah. electric? No. It's electric, it's totally electric. First of all, the hardware. Since we have uh, different kind of sensors, we have the 3D laser scanners, we have the 2D laser scanners, we have the stereo cameras, and not just one, we have six stereo cameras so that we can view the whole 360 view of the vehicle around, uh, around the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Problem was how to deal with such kind of uh, large data. So we had this uh, small uh, embedded PCs, we are using these Jetsons yeah. for pre-processing, then how to transfer this uh, all data to the main PCs. Then we uh, uh, mounted a switch on the roof. So through this fiber optic cable, we are now transferring all the data to the main PCs. Then comes the challenge of uh, our own framework, navigation framework, which, is, uh, which has these different modules like perception, navigation, safety. And then we had to distribute this mod, these all modules into different PCs because of the processing power. Then the second challenge is, as I already mentioned, is the safety. So you talk about the type of data, it was too large type of data. Yeah. What type of data was that like? So, were, were images so of course we have these images from the stereo camera, we have the point cloud from the stereo camera, we have this uh, 3D laser scanners, uh, which are these Auster uh, OS0. We have this point out from the ouster, so it's a uh, it's a uh, huge uh, data. All this data was used for what exactly? Like for detecting obstacles, or so you cannot separate this data. Like you say, okay, I use this uh, sensor. sensor particularly for this task. Yeah. So it's all done in the framework. Yeah, okay. But mainly, I can tell you, like for example, for general mapping the environment. At the moment, I'm using three D laser scanner. Mm -hmm. So then I can map the whole environment and I know, okay, these are, uh, this is the obstacles, these are the obstacles, this is the drivable area. Then I use image segmentation to exactly identify the path where I have to drive. So I use images there. Yeah. Then again, to detect the pedestrians or uh, their skeletons, I again use the images. Yeah. So, uh, so you cannot say okay this particular sensor is for this they all have to work together yeah. they all work uh, together yeah. are, the data is later on fused in the in the framework so can you give me like more details about the safety measures that you are taking yeah. so this system we bought from sick company it is known for these kind of safety modules mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that this 
system is directly connected to the hardware of the vehicle. So we are directly getting the uh, speed of the vehicle from the speed encoder which is mounted on the motors. Mm -hmm. And then this relays are directly connected to the emergency brakes of the vehicle. So for example, if something happens or someone comes in the safety field, the vehicle has to stop. Mm -hmm. The emergency brakes are uh, uh, activated. So already autonomous vehicles are there already. Yeah? What difference does the autobus has from the other uh, state of art of vehicles there? Our autonomous uh, vehicle, or we also call it autobus, um, is different from the rest of the vehicle is because we have special interaction modules. And based on these modules, we navigate. So the navigation or the decision making not only involves just uh, based on the obstacle, but based on the reaction of the pedestrians. So yeah. it predicts, it can predict what the pedestrians are doing, what they will do. In the exactly. Future. So initially it predicts, yeah. then, then the interaction module gives a signal, okay, based on the speed or delay to a bus stop, if the bus has to now take the priority or the pedestrian has to take the priority, so it signals accordingly and based on the reaction, if they are stopping, then the bus can easily drive. If not, then the bus has to slow down. But the idea here is that we need to have a smooth navigation, not that we always just keep on braking if the pedestrians are coming. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because I read an article uh, that people took this advantage, advantage of uh, the stopping behavior and they used to just come in front of the vehicle and the bus had to stop. Yeah. So in this case, we try to signal, we try to talk to them through audio signal. We tell them, okay, please give way, please be careful, please be aware of the vehicle. And based on this, we can already um, reduce the time and need not to break them. And if they did not stop, the vehicle has just across the cross Well, uh, <laughs> this is some special cases. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In any case, then we have to stop, yeah, but maybe we can give them some polite messages, yeah. something like this, so that they at least get there. Okay, thank you so much for this. No problem. <laughs> no, thank you uh, for visiting uh, our lab. Thank you. If you have Having anything else, else please uh, let us know. With autonomous vehicles, we have improved efficiency since we have reduced idling times. Also, these new vehicles are mostly electric, so we also have reduced or even zero emissions. We have also increased safety and increased reliability. Because think about a smart city that has like a network of autonomous vehicles. These vehicles can communicate and it would be easier for the vehicle to choose a path or a road that has less traffic. So if we are talking about buses and public transport, these vehicles will have schedules that is not affected by human factors. You know also what is autonomous and people trust so much? Airplanes. Airplanes are almost autonomous. Taking off and landing are now autonomous and they are done by computers. Still the pilot is important, but even in the hard scenarios like when there is fog and it's hard for the pilot to land, in this situation autonomous landing is even more favorable than a pilot taking control. This even shows how the computer can be more trusted in such scenarios. Using the sensors mentioned in autonomous vehicles don't just help the vehicle to know what's in its surrounding. The computer also has models that can predict the motion of the objects around it. So when there is a person standing, for example, at the roadside, the computer can predict if this person is crossing the road or, for example, another prediction is that this person will stay in his place. Based on these predictions, the autonomous vehicle can take action, which can ensure the safety for everyone in this scenario. At a certain point, Google has launched some autonomous vehicles, which was level 3 or what is called conditional autonomy. In level 3, the car can drive autonomously, but there should be a driver in the car. You know, in case of emergency, the driver has to take control. What happened was that the drivers were trusting the technology too much. Some of them were sleeping, some of them were even drinking coffee or eating while the vehicle was doing its job. And this has led to many accidents. That's why some car companies decided to launch their vehicles after reaching level 4, which is complete autonomy, which ensures that the vehicle can handle almost all the situations that they can face on their own. Autonomous vehicles are trained on many, many millions of data. This includes driving the vehicles themselves on roads, also, millions of data can be gathered from simulations. 
and this will always ensure that any autonomous vehicle will have more experience than any other driver on the road. So imagine driving for 70 years, still an autonomous vehicle will have more experience than you. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section. Also, you can find more work from RR Lab on their YouTube channel. I'll leave their channel link in the video description. I'll see you guys in the next one.